Number five, pay attention to signs and signals. Right now on my website, if you go to free stuff, you can get a lot more than what's just on the home page. You'll have to register there. Anyway, I have an article talking about the TFM 10% system. And you could also, you'll also have access to our free market timing course. So go in and learn about those signs and signals. And then, of course, catch up on YouTube on all my other Trading Simplified shows. And, of course, the week in charts. And we recently got a TFM 10% system, sell system. Now, this was on a rolling basis and not a calendar basis. So technically, a calendar weekly would trigger on a Friday. But I see this signal as with designer's intent in mind. In other words, I felt like that once a market dropped more than 10%, it was officially a signal with a few of the caveats that complete the system. But anyway, if you go to free stuff, daily.com slash free stuff, you'll have access to this article and the market timing course. Number six, avoid conservative investments. A relative of mine contacted me right before the pandemic, and she was in a bit of a panic. Of course, as usual, she waited until she was down 30 or 40 or 50 percent before telling me what she did. And they put her in a big cap conservative fundamental fund because she told them she wants to stay conservative with her money. And this is what happened during the pandemic slide. Notice on the bottom I have HV. Notice it was at really low levels and it shot up about 10 times from those levels. Now, just because something isn't that volatile doesn't mean that it can't increase in volatility. And you can see this conservative, and I'm making little air quotes, investment dropped nearly 50%. And notice, again, the volatility increased about 10%. And another one of the conservative, so to speak, investments they put her in was real estate. And look what real estate did. It dropped nearly 50% too. And then also the volatility increased by a factor of 10. Number seven, less is more. If you're on my trading service, which I put out every night, I'm probably boring you to tears lately because there's really not a whole lot of setups. They have one that I might show tonight that I'm thinking about. We did have one on my call list today that really took off, but unfortunately I didn't recommend it as an official setup, so I'm not sure how much credit I'll get for that. Maybe some client will be nice enough to pat me on the back for that. But anyway, long story endless, I haven't really recommended doing a whole lot in quite a while. In fact, you know, it's interesting just to show you how human nature is. I'm actually... Lost a few clients lately. I think they've gotten bored. I think they're craving action. And I have to tell you, I really wish somebody would tell me many, 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 many years ago, hey, Dave, sit in your hands a little bit. Let this crazy market shake out. So I would encourage you to trade less and less and less unless you find something that just looks fantastic. And I thought this stock looked fantastic. This is a former mystery chart. And it was a bow tie. It triggered here. We had a stop down here. IPT up here. Initial profit target, that is. It did hit the initial profit target, and it stopped out since. Uh, full disclosure, I do still have some shares in this particular stock. But the reason I'm showing you this, this is the only long that I can remember for this year. In fact, this is the only one that is an official recommendation. I, do, I did trade a couple other longs this year such as BRCC, Black Rack Full Coffee, and Sky X. Sky X actually failed miserably, but the Black Rifle did okay. Anyway, my point is that you want to be selective and less is more. I did an article called Cash is Not Trash, although <laughs> it might be trash soon. I hate to confuse the issue with facts, but 80% of the... All currency in circulation, the dollar that is, was printed in the last two years. That's a little scary, but I digress. Number eight, don't buy relative strength, buy absolute strength, okay? In my Facebook group, I've got a client that's been posting some relative strength charts showing which sectors are the strongest relative to the other sectors or relative to the S&P. That type of analysis is fantastic. I would encourage you to do that type of analysis. I'm sure you can do it on stockcharts.com, so check that out. However, you don't want to buy something that's just 
strong on a relative basis. You want to buy something that's strong on an absolute basis. Energy's right now at or near all-time highs. Metals and mining at or near all-time highs. Defense stocks at or near all-time highs. Okay, those are areas you should be focusing on on the long side, and not a whole lot of other areas. Metals and mining might be another one that fits that mold. Number nine, if you are a little bit more advanced, I would consider sh I would consider shorting. But please be warned, prepare to have your arse handed to you. Shorts are a pain in the butt. I've been shorting futures all morning, and I've been getting knocked out all morning and dropping F-bombs all morning. So do be careful if you decide to short. We had a few shorts this year that set up. One, I think, hit the profit target, initial profit target. And that was it. And another one could have a little discretion, might have gotten you a little money out of it, but certainly nothing to brag about. The reason shorting is so hard is you have these unbelievable retrace rallies. They knock you out, usually right before the market turns right back down. It can be quite frustrating. So tread lightly if you've never shorted before. And oh, by the way, this is another one of the things I wanted to put in this list. Have the pattern, have your pattern or setup match the overall market. Right now, the market's in the early phases of rolling over from all-time highs. So find stocks that are also in early phases of rolling over from all-time highs, as opposed to stocks that are at low levels and have been going down for two years. Those stocks, I wouldn't rush out and buy those stocks, but those stocks are probably closer to a bottom than they are a top. So the big opportunity is going to be on those stocks that are at very high levels and are just beginning to roll over. And I preach this often in the week in charts. Go in and watch as many as you can stand. Just don't operate heavy machinery afterwards. Number 10, avoid positioning in inverse shares. The reason that I use the word positioning is that means buying and holding them for days, weeks, or even months. I think it's okay to trade them on an intraday basis if you are a little bit more advanced. You got to be careful with the day trading though. Because we're really only wired to make so many decisions and it can be very stressful. And I probably do a little bit too much day trading. I used to do little or none and now I probably do a little too much. But lately I have been going in and shorting futures and buying inverted shares to sort of do a couple things. Kind of mitigate some of my long, the damage in the long term holdings. And keep in mind I do have stops on those. So it's, there's very little left in my portfolio because... I saw each position to its fruition, right? Honoring that stop. Now, earlier, by the way, when I said see each position to its fruition, easy for me to say, I was talking about don't bail on everything. But the other thing that I meant by that was make sure you do honor your stop. And if you get stopped out, you need to exit the position. Now, this is why you don't hold these inverted shares longer term. This is SPSX which you think would be going straight up right now. And it has gone up a bit. But notice on a monthly basis, it was at 6,000 a few years back, probably when it first came public. And now it's at $21, literally $21. How crazy is that? And the reason is, it's, it's a little complex, but I think the main reason is if, this, if you are running these shares, you have to be short the market. So if the market drops, you have profits and you have to parlay those profits back into the short side. And it has kind of a reverse Martingale effect. And if you don't understand what all that means, just know that you can Google it if you want to and you'll know more than me. But just know that they have this kind of decay, so to speak, where they all tend to go to zero. Now, they'll never get to zero because when they get down to the low single digits to in order to stay on the exchange that requires stocks be, let's say, $5 or more, they'll reverse split these things. As I often say, they will reverse split you to death in these inverse shares. So try to only hold these things for a few days. Ideally, I just like to go in, get my piece, and then move on on an intraday basis for the most part.